now that we've written our Google Ads runner with helper functions, coding against the Google Ads API is extremely easy, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Just to demonstrate this, I'm going to make an API call that lists all of the customers that are accessible by the user who is logged into our application. I'm just going to do this as a proof of concept because whatever endpoint you want to hit, whatever API call you want to make, it's going to be effectively the same process regardless of what functionality you're trying to implement. So this will just show you how to go about making any sort of API call. So in our case, the reason why I want to list accessible customers is because this is a pretty basic fundamental part of any web application that's consuming the Google Ads API. I mean, we're handling all the authentication, logging in, but one of the next thing a user has to do is specify which account they want to look at. Let's head on over to our server. Tap.route. Customers. Def, we'll just call it customers. Return, basically, a list of resource names. Let's go ahead and create a directory called customers where we'll put our list accessible customers class and then we will create a couple of files inside that customers directory one will be our list accessible customers .py file and an init.py file so now if we go back to our list accessible customers we'll create a function called you guessed it list accessible customers. And this method will take a token. And what this method is going to do is hit the customer service list accessible customers endpoint on the Google Ads API in order to retrieve all customer accounts that the particular refresh token has access to. And by refresh token, I mean we're going to take this token use it in our secret manager to get a refresh token and that'll give us what accounts we have available to us. So the first thing we have to do is uh, create the client. What we're going to do is just use that helper method we just created in the GA runner. So we'll import that from GA runner. We'll just import create client. And here all we have to do is call create client with our token. And keep in mind, all of the error handling related to the refresh token is already taken care of in that previous step where we implemented the GA runner. So the next thing that we're going to do is implement the logic to actually retrieve those customers and call the Google Ads API. So let's flip back to that code example. And as you can see here, this is the equivalent of creating the Google Ads client, which we're doing in our GA runner. Here, uh, there's a try block where the main function is run and basically what we're going to do is just mimic this have a try block with all of this logic here so let's come in here and we'll write our try block and we'll handle our exception in the same way so we flip back to the example we could just grab this line and because we've already implemented a helper method, we can just call that on the exception. However, we also need to import this Google Ads exception. We can do it at the very top here. Right now, this code example is calling the getting the customer service, calling the list accessible customers endpoint, and then it's just printing some information. But what we want to do is return this to our client. So let's format this in a way that is useful to our client. Let's just uh, return a list. So we can get rid of all of this because we don't need to actually print the results. And we'll create a variable called resource names, which is going to be a list of the resource names that we're returning. And this is going to be equal to a list, and we'll call it resource name for resource name in accessible customers dot resource names. And then we can just return our resource names. Great. 
And you can see how easy this was, how little code this was, because we had that GA runner in place. Now, let's flip back to the server and implement this endpoint on our server. So if we come in here, we've got our customers route. This is Python, so I don't need a semicolon there. And instead of just returning an empty list, let's go ahead and return the actual data that we want. So the first thing that we need to do is grab the token, which we'll pass in as a header. So what we'll do is we'll say headers equals quest.headers, and then our token is simply going to be equal to headers token. And then finally, we can get our resource names by calling the list accessible customers endpoint. So let's import that at the top here. And we'll call list accessible customers with our token. Now, what we haven't handled here is the case of the invalid refresh token. So if this is successful, we'll just return resource names. However, if it's not, we need a mechanism to handle this. So let's wrap this in a try block. And then we'll say accept exception as x. And what we'll do here is we will return the value of a helper method that we're about to write called handle exception with our exception. So let's write that method. So our handle exception method is going to take the exception. Basically what we want to do is tell if if the error is that invalid refresh token error, we need to send some information back to the client. That way they can redirect the user to log in. We'll grab our error string, check if the error is equal to our refresh error, which we haven't defined yet. So let's head back to our GA runner. And instead of having this hard coded, call this refresh error. And we'll define that up here. Refresh error is equal to that same error message. Now back in our server, refresh error. So now if our error is equal to the refresh error, we will return some JSON. need to import JSON. And let's just return an object with a code of 401, an authorized name, invalid refresh token, and a description of just the error itself. A little cleanup else we'll just return a generic server error you'll probably want to handle these a little more gracefully however for our purposes all we need to do is return something generic we'll just return a 500 internal server error and we'll just Turn the error. So taking a look at this, we'll grab the token from the header, we'll get our resource names from that list accessible customers method, and if it's successful request, we'll just return the resource names. Otherwise, we'll handle this exception to detect whether it's a refresh token error or a server error and give that information to the client. That way they can gracefully generate a new refresh token and make this request again.